Hello and welcome back. Today we will continue Unit 1 on Frequency Domain Analysis. Lecture 1-3, we will continue our discussion of special signals and signal energy and power. The objectives of today's lecture are to define even and odd functions, to review periodic and complex exponential signals, and to describe signal energy and power. Even and odd functions, some functions have the property that when they undergo a change in the independent or dependent variable, the functions do not actually change. These functions are said to be invariant under that change. You studied linear time invariant signals in your EC205 circuits and systems course. An even function is one that is invariant under time reversal or from t to negative t. In other words, g of t equals g of negative t. This function is a mirror image across the ordinate axis or the y-axis. An odd function is one that is invariant under amplitude scaling and time reversal, t to negative t. In other words, g of t equals negative g of negative t. This function is a negative mirror image across the ordinate axis. Now let's examine even and odd on the following figure. We have two figures here. The one on the left, if I draw the ordinate axis down the middle, you can tell it's a negative mirror image of itself. So it's an odd function, and this one is actually a sine wave. For the figure on the right, if I draw the ordinate axis down the middle, you see that it creates a mirror image of itself. So this is an even function, and it's actually a cosine. Periodic signals. A periodic function is one that has been repeating an exact pattern for an infinite time and will continue to repeat that exact pattern for an infinite time. A periodic function g of t is one for which g of t equals g of t plus n capital T for any integer value of n where capital T is the period of the function. A periodic function is invariant under the time shift t to t plus n cap t. The minimum positive interval over which a function repeats is called the fundamental period t naught. The fundamental frequency f naught in a periodic function is the reciprocal of the fundamental period. A function that is not periodic is said to be a, an aperiodic function. When you sum two periodic signals, the result is only periodic if a period t naught can be found that is an integer multiple of the fundamental periods for both functions. The smallest value of t naught is called the least common multiple LCM of the two fundamental periods. In general, x of t is equal to a cosine omega 1t plus theta 1 plus b cosine omega 2t plus theta 2. So the period for this first one is 2 pi f1 or 2 pi over omega 1. And the period for the second signal is 2 pi f2 or 2 pi over omega 2. So this is periodic if and only if mt1 is equal to nt2, which equals t0, because this represents the least common multiple between those two periods. So the fundamental frequency f0 would be equal to 1 over t0, or you could say it's the greatest common factor between the frequencies f1 and F2, so F0 would be equal to F1 over M, which equals F1 over N. The following two figures show examples of summing together two periodic signals where the result is, in the top case, a periodic signal, but in the bottom case, it's aperiodic. This means it was not possible to find the least common multiple between the two signals that were added together. In this top signal, it is possible to find the period. For example, one period would be t is equal to four seconds. However, this is not the fundamental period because it's not the smallest. So the fundamental period is actually t naught is equal to two seconds. Example one, for the following signal, find the period, fundamental period, and fundamental frequency. So what you see here is that we have a square wave and one possible period would be 10 seconds. Actually, any multiple of five is a period. However, the fundamental period, which is the smallest, is five seconds. 
So the fundamental frequency is one over five Hertz or the frequency in radians per second would be two pi over five radians per second. Example two, find the fundamental period of y of t equals cosine pi t plus three cosine two pi t. So for this first signal, we have omega one is equal to pi. And since we know that omega is equal to two pi over t, t is equal to two pi over omega. So t1 is equal to two pi over pi, which is two seconds. For the second signal, omega two is equal to two pi. So t2 is equal to two pi over two pi, which equals one second. So t naught is the least common multiple between one and two. So T naught is two seconds and F naught is equal to one over two Hertz. Find the fundamental period Y of T equals cosine pi T plus three cosine two T. The first signal here, omega one once again is equal to pi. So T one is equal to two seconds. Omega two is equal to two. So T two is equal to two pi over two, which is pi seconds. Since pi is an irrational number, there is no least common multiple between T one and T two. So the sum of these two signals, we would say is aperiodic. The following figures were generated in MATLAB and they show the plots for examples two and three. And you can see that the top plot is indeed periodic with period two where the dark blue line represents the sum of the two dashed lines. Whereas the bottom one, the dark blue represents the sum of the two dashed lines. But in this case, you can see that that signal is indeed not periodic. Complex exponential complex sinusoid signals. A complex exponential or sinusoid has the form e to the j omega naught t, where omega naught is the angular velocity in radians per second. It can be represented as a vector with a length one in the complex plane with an angle of omega naught t. As t increases, the vector rotates in a circle of radius one. If omega naught is greater than zero, it rotates counterclockwise. If omega naught is less than zero, it rotates clockwise. Euler's identity repeats like a sinusoid where e to the j omega naught t is equal to the cosine omega naught t plus j sine omega naught t. Alternately, the identity can be written as cosine omega naught t is equal to e to the j omega naught plus e to the negative j omega naught t over two. So here we have a sketch of e to the j omega naught t in the complex plane where the vertical axis is the imaginary axis. The horizontal axis is the real axis, and it's a vector, just like you saw in your AC circuits course and in your circuits and systems course, where as it rotates, it traces out the unit circle. So this has a magnitude of one, and it rotates at omega naught t, and remember, it's going to go counterclockwise if omega naught's greater than zero, and it's going to go clockwise if omega naught's less than zero. So the vector is e to the j omega naught t. Now what if you have e to the j omega naught t plus theta? So this vector will still rotate with time But now what you're going to see is that if this is e to the j omega naught t, there's an additional angle here for theta, and it will be this vector that rotates. 
with omega naught T. So if we make the three-dimensional sketch of this, here we would have the imaginary axis, the real axis, and then coming out would be T. So if I were to make a sketch of E to the J omega naught T, you would see that it would start along the real axis and it would coil down the time axis like that. If I similarly made one for E to the negative J omega naught T, here's your real axis, here's your imaginary axis, and here's T again. This one starts and it rotates the other direction down the time axis. So now let's say I add these two waveforms together. What you would get is something along the time axis now that lays along that real plane and creates two cosine omega naught t. And this is why e to the j omega naught t plus e to the negative j omega naught t over two is equal to cosine omega naught t. Similarly, if I took this top waveform and I subtracted the bottom waveform, and I made a plot of it. Here would be the imaginary axis, here would be the real axis, and here would be T. And now you would have something along the imaginary plane like that. And what you see here is that this is two sine omega naught T, but because it's along the imaginary axis, there's a J here. And this is where we get our other Euler identity, e to the J, omega naught t minus e to the negative j omega naught t over 2j equals sine omega naught t. Example four, find the fundamental period and fundamental frequency for y of t equals e to the negative j 60 pi t. So omega naught is equal to 60 pi. So t naught is equal to 2 pi over 60 pi, which is equal to 1 over 30 seconds. So F naught is equal to 1 over 30 hertz, or in radians per second, 2 pi over 30 radians per second. So then the question becomes, is G of T equal to E to the J omega naught T periodic? Well, yes, based upon the problem we just finished, because omega naught is equal to two pi over T naught. So T naught is equal to two pi over omega naught. Another way to think about it is E to the J omega naught T is equal to the cosine of omega naught t plus j sine omega naught t. So you've got the sum of two sinusoids which have the same fundamental frequency, so therefore their result would have to also be periodic. Signal energy and power. Signal energy is defined as the area under the square of the magnitude of the signal. If the signal is voltage, the signal energy of x of t is e is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity, x of t squared dt. The units are v squared seconds. Notice that we are now talking about signals and not voltage um, or current or power as you think about in terms of circuit analysis. So the units are volt squared seconds. Signal energy is defined to be proportional to the actual energy delivered by a signal, but not necessarily equal to the physical energy. The units are joules. In this case, the voltage signal V of T across a resistor R or current through resistor I of T is the actual physical energy delivered to a resistor by the voltage. 
This would be the energy that you studied in your circuits course. So this energy is the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity, V squared over R dt, or the integral from negative infinity to infinity, I squared R dt. And the units are joules. So remember, joules means physical energy, and that would have a resistor. Signal energy is volts squared times seconds, and there won't be a resistor. So now the question says, find the energy in the voltage V of T equals E to the minus five T U of T. So the energy is equal to the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity, the magnitude of X of T squared DT. So it's the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity, E to the negative five T U of T squared DT. And since it's u of t, that's really just the integral from zero to infinity, e to the minus five t squared dt, which equals the integral from zero to infinity, e to the negative 10 t dt, which is negative one over 10, e to the negative 10 t evaluated from zero to infinity, which is negative one over 10 times zero minus one, or one over 10. And remember this is signal energy, the units are volt squared seconds. If we assume R is equal to one, we can write this as physical energy, E is equal to one over 10 joules. Here are two figures that were generated in MATLAB and that show two examples of energy signals where the top one has an energy signal of, has an energy of 12.5 and the bottom one has an energy of 25. And what you can see that the second one is really the mirror image of the top one, so it doubles the energy. Let's do two more examples. Example seven, find the energy in the voltage V of t equals five rect of t over two times 10 to the negative six. So the first thing we're going to do is let's make a sketch of the voltage. So it's a rectangle function with an amplitude of five, centered at zero, where the left is one microsecond and the right is at one microsecond. So the energy is the integral from negative 10 to the negative six to positive 10 to the negative six, five squared dt, which is 25 times two times 10 to the negative six. So the energy is 50 times 10 to the negative six volts squared second or 50 micro volt square second. Now we're gonna find the energy in the voltage V of T equal to two volts. So here we have a plot that is two volts for all time. So that would be going all the way to negative infinity and positive infinity. So what you should notice immediately is that the energy is going to be infinite. There is no finite energy. So we now have a new vocabulary word and it's called an energy signal. Any signal that has finite energy is called an energy signal. So in the case of these two examples here, this top one would be an example of a energy signal. And this concludes lecture 1-1 on special signals, signal energy and power.